Hello there. Hello. Welcome to God is in the house, but it's the it's um, the ARC Apostolic Resurrection Life Center for um, that's we're starting it up. It's our it's our small beginnings, and as the Lord grows um, grows us and grows um, our facility placement, then um, we will bring in more and more um, other people for helping to train up the body of Christ to equip the saints for ministry throughout throughout the globe. Um, so I just wanted to say welcome. It is Saturday, the 13th of November, 2021. And we're going to start, you know, there's been, um, there's been a, a lot of, um, a, a lot of things going on globally, as you know, and a lot of fears and anxieties, um, a lot of health-related issues, but also financial issues. And so um, just want to really encourage each and every one of you, if, uh, um, if you do not already tithe, then please tithe to where your local body is or as the Lord leads you to tithe and, and send an offering. We want to offer you the opportunity to either tithe or send offering to Resurrection Life uh, for the purpose of outreach, global outreach, missions and the local the local missions and the operations here at home in manitoba so in order to be able to give and should you know should the lord prompt you and holy spirit say you know what i've been putting this thing off maybe i should just do this um you're more than welcome to give you can go to the website and on there you have options available it's www.resurrectionlife dot bc dot ca there is paypal available to you there there yeah, is uh, yeah. <laughs> and then there are you know you can send by send checks through the mail uh there is the um and the mail the mailing address for resurrection life uh ministries is box 415 or box 1271 carberry c-a-r-b-e-r-r-y Manitoba, Canada. The postal code is R0K0H0. And then the for e-transfer, to send uh, e-transfer via the email, the address for the e email address is resurrectionlife90 at gmail.com. So we want to thank you for, you know, seeking the Lord and, and being led of the Spirit and however he leads you. And at the very least, we certainly welcome your prayers. All prayer prayer offerings are welcome. I just want to to actually say thank you so much for all the prayers for me personally that have gone out over the last few days. And um, I so I would say I'm doing much much better <laughs> thanks to the saints, the saints Praise that Lord. have been praying, and God is answering prayer. And the thing is, you know what? He wants to answer prayers your prayers he wants to answer and meet the needs of your heart for he is a mighty god there's nothing too difficult for him and so i'm going to just speak a few declarations to start with and and we will we'll also pray you know um so <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll just pray and we'll say we invite holy spirit and the presence of Almighty God into our midst today. No matter where you are, if you know Jesus, God is in your house. And if he mm -hmm. isn't, then you can certainly invite him in. And so we just say, Jesus, we invite the power Thank you, Jesus. and presence of we Almighty God to dwell in our midst today. Lord, that it will be your glory, your glory, Lord. We are here on this earth to worship you and to bring glory and honor to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And so, Lord, let your glory fill this place. Let your glory fill each home. Let your glory fill your people, God. Let your glory fill in your presence, oh God. It's about your presence because where you are, there is your glory. Amen. And so, Father, we just bless Amen. each and every one of your folks that are, that are attending with us in this moment or who will attend um, as they listen a bit later on. And I just want to, I want to speak some positive declarations. You know, we have a lot of negative stuff that goes on around us, a lot of mm -hmm. negative stuff that we might even speak out of our own mouths. And we've got to change our atmosphere. And to change the atmosphere, we need to speak to, to the stuff, not about it, 
to the Amen. stuff because our authority declaration the, the authority of Jesus Christ dwells in us and so I'm just going to you know I'm just going to pick and choose a few declarations here and I'm going to say um, from James 3 to uh, 2 to 5 I set the course of my life with my words so think about that you set the course of your life with your words God is on my side therefore I declare I cannot be discouraged or defeated Romans 8 37 and Psalm 91 Philippians 4 13 they tell us so as Abraham did I speak God's promises over my life my faith is being strengthened to possess all that Jesus won for me we can speak that and we the thing is not only speaking it but to believe have faith and believe speaking and believing trusting God for his word that his word is true God is not a liar he is not a liar he will not tell us lies what lies have we believed and fallen trapped to that's quite a different story but now we just say we break the power of lies in and through our lives we break the power of lies that we have believed in in between these ears we just break the power of lies and we speak truth and the truth is that my God is on my side the truth is I cannot be discouraged or defeated the truth is as Abraham did we speak God's promises Amen over our lives the truth is my faith is being strengthened to possess all that Jesus won for me and that's according to Romans chapter 4 verses 17 to 23 and I speak that you and I I have a sound mind I declare that I will think right thoughts say the right words and make the right decisions in every situation that I would face today or each day but this is for today and every day we need to bring bring to mind the mind of Christ 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 <laughs> you know what and I expect that today will be the best day of my life spiritually mm. emotionally relationally and financially in Jesus name there are many um, financial challenges that people face some are some are so dire and so many folks in the other nations but right here at home in our own nation there's a lot of financial crisis going on but my God shall supply all my needs according to his according to his riches not mine his riches in Christ Jesus I speak to every mountain of discouragement stress depression and lack and cast it into the sea in Jesus mighty name Amen. that's from Mark 11 22 to 24 and we make the statement and we declare that I am abundantly blessed in my finances I know who I am in God and I live accordingly I expect to experience the supernatural Amen. the supernatural should be our natural that we walk in because the supernatural king of kings the God of the universe dwells within us I am in inner unity with the beliefs of Jesus it's time to bring our belief systems into alignment with Jesus and his beliefs not our opinions not what we think and believe but what the truth is and the truth is I am in inner unity with the beliefs of Jesus and you know God passionately loves me he passionately loves you and so I release peace joy and love to others I release peace joy and love to you Amen. because that's who our God is he releases peace joy and love to us and I'm just going to take it's it's praying scripture it's uh, um, one of the daily prayers that's in the heart of God and and I take it from that um, book what says I will not fear so as you and I pray in the midst of whatever trial 
that we might presently find ourselves, we choose to worship God for who he is. He is the king of the universe. He is the Lord on high. He is the almighty God. There is none like him. And so we can pray together and I'll just say, Father, how desperately I need your help. How desperately we need your help in aligning my heart with the truth of your word. With my mouth, I would say that you are in the midst of the difficulties of my life, working them together for my good. But the unease in my heart would say otherwise. Help me, O oh God, by the power of your Holy Spirit at work in me, change my heart. Remove fear and make me fearless. Remove timidity and make me bold for your kingdom. Remove doubt and unbelief and increase my faith. For I will remember your deeds, O Lord, the miracles that you have done in my life as I have journeyed towards you. I will meditate on all of your works and think about the many mighty things that you have done for me and for us. I purpose this day to worship you alone. I will bow to no other God. That's an I will, I choose. I will not bow to any other God. Because you are my God, my refuge and my strength, I will not fear even though trouble may seem to surround me. Because of your great love for me, I know that you will rescue me. You will protect me. You will be with me. You will deliver me because you are my God and you have redeemed me and you call me by name. I am your child. You will be with me when I pass through the waters of diversity, adversity, sorry, and diverse adversities. I will not drown. The swift current of the trial of disappointment that I might find myself in will not sweep me away. The fiery trial of sickness or loneliness or financial instability or whatever the blank is you want to fill in will not set me ablaze. I'm going to say that again. The fiery trial of sickness or loneliness or financial instability will not set me ablaze. You are the Lord my God, the Holy One of Israel, my Savior. Therefore, I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonders. I will be glad and rejoice in you and sing praise to your name. For my hope is in your unfailing love. His, your unfailing love, Lord. My hope is in your unfailing love that is at work on my behalf for my good to make me more like Jesus. Seal this work to my heart, O oh God, I pray. And in the beautiful name of the one who died to make me yours, in Jesus, amen. And I'm going to, I'm just going to touch on, you know, there's, uh, God is so able and he so wants us to be free from fear, from anxiety, from stress. And you know, I was reading in a, it's a, a book, it's actually, my mother had had it for years, and um, so every now and then I kind of pick it up and look take a look at it, and it's quite interesting, you know, that the, um, so many of the, uh, the trials or the sicknesses or the things in life that we go through are kind, they're rooted in fear, anxiety, stress, and not being loved or not feeling and uh, not knowing that love. Good. And John eight thirty six and it says, He who the Son sets free, we know this well, is free indeed. There's five R's to freedom of freedom, pardon me. They're not the only thing, but there are five R's. Recognize. Recognize where that fear is. Recognize what the roots are. Take responsibility for your actions. If there's something that you have, have said or done, 
that isn't in alignment with Jesus and his thinking and his being, then just take responsibility and acknowledge it. And repent and ask God to forgive. He's so always so ready and willing to forgive us. And then renounce. Renounce whatever it is. Renounce if there has been um, a bowing down to idol. Renounce yes. any words or word curses that may have been spoken either, you know, that you have spoken for yourself or against others. And then submit yourself to the Lord God Almighty. Resist the devil and he will flee. So all these other things would go. And we know from some of the scriptures, you know, that where fear, anxiety, and stresses come in, we've got a, an anecdote. We have several anecdotes. Antidotes. Proverbs 15, 13 and Proverbs 17, 22. A merry heart makes a cheerful countenance. But by someone, I'm sorry, can't even read my own writing, I wrote it out. Um, <laughs> a cheerful heart. Well, this is cool. A cheerful heart is good medicine. Do you think I wrote it? No, that I, I wrote it out. It could be me. Well, yeah, your writing is harder even. Yep. Um, a merry heart makes cheerful countenance. But by the, but by the brokenness of the heart. The heart, the spirit is broken. But by the sorrow in our hearts, the spirit is broken. A merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. You got problem with the bones. Got problems in different places in the heart. Got different problems throughout our systemic system. Well, 1 John 4.18, as we all know and quote many times, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear has torment. He that fears is not made perfect in love. And you can kind of, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but that'll be for another day. But when you break apart that scripture... There's four components there in 1 John 4.18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. And I didn't bring it with me. So if, if, there, if we are loved and know that we are loved, then there is no fear. But if there is fear and we're not loved well and not loved by others or don't perceive that we are then fear comes in and fear has torment hmm. where there is torment there is often unsettling in the mind the the things of you know whether it be psychological mental health issues the anxiety the stress the fear and if we're not yet made perfect in love, not being loved perfectly by others. These things come in. Others cannot possibly love us perfectly, but what we can do is choose to receive perfect love from our Father in heaven. He is love. And in John 14, 27, he says, and Jesus says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, give I to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. See, it's up to us to not let our hearts be troubled. When we let our hearts be troubled, then fear will enter. Do not let your hearts be troubled, troubled neither let it be afraid. So we have a responsibility not to allow our hearts to be troubled, but to look to the one who frees us from trouble. The one who gives us and we can receive his perfect love in Jesus' name. Okay. Wow. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity. That's right. Wow. He did not give us a spirit of fear. That's right. But he gave us 
Resurrection life and power. He gave us power. What what power would be that if it's not resurrection life and power? Mm -hmm. Or the mighty right arm of God or the mighty right hand of God to be mm -hmm. used to come against fear. In these days is fear triumphing over family? Is fear triumphing over relationships in friendships of long term relationships? Is fear coming into the church at the door of the church or let's call it the Acts 2 gathering of how they would have gathered in the early days in their houses and, and signs, wonders and miracles would have been following uh, all those wonderful meetings as they worshipped and uh, broke as far as having Passover together because it wasn't communion it was Passover because communion only came into being um, you know based on the Roman Catholic Church based on Constantine based on a, a lot of different things it was Passover Jesus did Passover you can read that in in Mark uh, uh, 22 14 and Luke 14 22 Jesus was fervently excited and desired emotionally to have Passover waiting for that season and that time and that Passover which would be the new covenant of this day of the ecclesia of the leaders of the apostolic order in the houses then and in our houses today in boldness even when that was going on, I want you to know, um, you think with all the different restrictions that are out right now, that there are certain police that are going in in the past, maybe the present, maybe in the future, to stop you from having relationship in the house of God. Well, it happened in Jesus' time. It happened for 300 years after that. But it did not stop. It only enhanced, propelled, ignited, exploded <laughs> the Holy Spirit and power. Yes, He did not give us. Uh, uh, he did not give us timidity. He gave us boldness in the Holy Spirit. Boldness in the blood of Yeshua Hamashiach. Boldness in the rock, Hakadesh, which is the Holy Spirit, which is the breath of God, and the breath of God that was spoken from the beginning of time. Are you going to sit in fear? Or are you going to step out in faith and believe who you are as a son and daughter of the Most High? Because it says in, in 2 Timothy there, verse 7, but we're going to look a little at other it says something else. It also said, and in love. That would be the unconditional love. Um, the, the resurrection life and power, the unconditional love. That our Yeshua HaMashiach had. Yahweh had. Yahweh the shepherd, 777. The way, which is the ecclesia. The way which had unconditional love that gathered in the homes that spread all over the known world at that time because they were being persecuted. But they persevered through the persecution and the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ through the testimony of those sons and daughters discipled by the apostles it was like a wildfire going across the land. Well, I don't know what land you're in or what nation you're in, but that is the same Ruach HaKadosh, that is the same fire. <laughs> the Holy Spirit woke me up and I looked at the clock today and it was 319. We're going to go to that, Acts 319. God got me up at 319 to speak Acts 319 to you. But before we get there, let's just look at this. I have it in the Amplified, which is called the, uh, um, it, it, it's called the Old Amplified. 
It's not the amplified version. Uh, it's called the amplified classic edition. Classic. Isn't, isn't it nice to be a classic edition? I'm kind of like a classic edition <laughs> at 71. What do you think? Oh, my goodness. Anyway, so let's look at this classic edition here. Uh, it says, starting in verse 1, the second Tim, this is Paul, an apostle. A special messenger. Are you a special messenger sent by God to advance the kingdom of God? That's where Momo is right now, our leader in Liberia. He's in Guinea. And they're doing resurrection life uh, crusades and conferences in Guinea. On, in, in a very Muslim nation. And they're advancing. The, and, they're, and fire is breaking forth. Go to our website. Uh, go, go look up uh, Guinea. Uh, look up the Facebook on, uh, if you're on our uh, global. Um, signs, wonders, and miracles happen, at, but it says it follows the apostle. Ever since we started out 30 years ago, people would come to us and, and say, you guys must be apostles because signs, wonders, and miracles are happening. And I said, I don't know. If you think we are, that's fine. We're just sons and daughters of the Most High. We're servants of the living God. We're sons. We didn't call ourselves apostles then. But as of today, yeah, we're apostles. We've, we've matured into it. We've kind of gone from milk uh, to, to whatever the Lord would have us to eat and to raise up others to doing the same. That's why we're doing ARC, Apostolic Resurrection Life Center, to raise up others the same way. That's what they were doing in... in in the Acts 2 uh, Ark, Apostolic Res Resurrection Life Center, each gathering, each home, each place that they went to, the fire of the Ruach HaKodesh went with them and, and the signs and miracles went with them as well. It just happened naturally as, as Leslie was speaking. It's just a natural thing for God to do. Have you, have you ever heard a watermelon uh, mature? Have you ever heard a watermelon and go pop? Because it was started out of the seed and all of a sudden you got a watermelon. What about cherries on a tree? Do you hear pop, 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 pop? No, it starts as a seed. And I want you to know when you plant a, a cherry tree, which we have done, it's generally for the next generation. But there will be some fruit in this generation. It takes three to five years. You've got to cultivate it. You've got to work with it. You've got, you, you've got to disciple it. You've got to trim it back. You've, you've, got to, you've got to prune it. You've got to keep the deer away from it. You've got to keep the pests away from it. And the grandkids, man, they clean it off pretty good. <laughs> but I'll tell you, we got some good jam. If you persevere and you wait. Do you think, do you think Paul, who was Saul at one time, and it says in Acts 9, 15, he was a chosen vessel by God. And it says in Romans chapter 1, right after that, that he was an apostle chosen by God. If God chose, chooses you, if you are chosen to do his work, no man can say that. Or it comes from God. It can be commissioned or recognized by man to say, yeah, we see the acts of the apostle working and flowing through you because it's not normal for these things to happen. But if you trust and you have faith and you believe, do you not think the Lord will give you as he has given us? He trusted us with a, with a little and then he gave us a lot and he gave us a lot more and a lot more. If anybody knows us over the last 30 years, they can testify to the testimony of Jesus in us as the prophecy, as the prophetic direction, as it says in Revelations 19.10. Of how the Holy Spirit has all done this in us. And the nine fruits of the Spirit. And the nine gifts of the Spirit. Yes, it's been with challenge. But let's look at this. He says, a special manager, messenger of, of Yeshua HaMashiach, or Christ Jesus, by the will of God. In other words, by God's chosen by, the, by his will. Not man, by his will, according to the promise of life that is in Yeshua HaMashiach. Wow. You know, we've raised up many disciples around the world. And those disciples can testify to the signs, wonders, and miracles. But they can testify to 
Do we, do we operate in fear or do we operate in faith? Do we, do, do we have a strong belief system? Do we disciple the proper way? Do we have resurrection life and power? Do we, do we love unconditionally? Do we have unconditional forgiveness and unmeasured acceptance and walk in covenant with our God, but also in covenant with those who want to walk with us and have Passover together? Amen. You do. <laughs> well, we're always a work in progress, you know, and lots of opportunities to exercise. What you got some? Fun. No, no okay. I'm just saying. I'm just butting in. Okay, well, you, that's all right. You're a sheep and you can butt in any time. Mm. You're a good little sheep. Mm. Good little lamb. Bah, bah. Mm. So, <laughs> verse 2, it says, To Timothy, my beloved child. Isn't it interesting, you know, uh, here, Timothy is being discipled by Paul. He says, my beloved child. Grace, favor, and spiritual blessing. Isn't that uh, beautiful? You know, uh, Apostle Vincent Poole uh, was with us on Thursday, and he he prayed a beautiful blessing, you know, uh, a favor and spiritual blessing over, over all those that were, uh, you know, for, over David and, and Marie Ironstand, but for all of those that uh, were, if you want to go back and, and look at that on, th on, on our Thursday broadcast on YouTube, but on, uh, on Friday night at the Macedonian call, uh, uh, Apostle Poole did the same thing. He does, he does it every Friday, you know, as far as having Passover together, as far as the feast. But he also speaks the blessing. A thousand blessings he speaks over. Blessings come from heaven, from our God, through the, uh, the Apostle, through the fivefold ministry, through the Ecclesia, but also through you. It doesn't come through an angel. Angels don't give blessings. Those who are anointed to lay hands on people do. Okay. It says, my beloved child, favor and special blessing, mercy and peace. But it says, mercy to your heart, healing to your heart, mercy to your heart, and, and peace from Adonai, the father, Abba. He says, okay, peace from Abba, Adonai, the Father, and from Yeshua HaMashiach, our Lord, Yahweh. I thank Adonai, whom I worship with a pure conscience. Hallelujah. Did you, were you here Thursday uh, on uh, StreamYard when uh, uh, we were so blessed to have worship from uh, Marie Ironstan? Pure worship, uh, pure from art. In this, and it says, a worship with a pure conscience. Resurrection life is a lifestyle of worship. Our apostle, who brought us up, Apostle Charlotte Baker, she taught us, she discipled us, that worship was a lifestyle in your heart. Whether you can sing or not, it's a, it's a lifestyle from your heart. With a pure conscience. With no guile. Who, who, was the, who, who did Jesus say? Uh, you are a man of no guile. Wasn't that Nathaniel? Under a tree? I saw you under a tree, Nathaniel. Are you, did you not think Yeshua HaMashiach cannot see you sitting where you, wherever you are if you are have no guile, if you are in resurrection life with a pure heart worshiping in spirit and the truth as it says in John 4, verses 22, 23, and 24. It says, Adonai, Elohim, is searching, searching for you, son or daughter of the Most High, worshiping in spirit. Mm -hmm. In spirit and in truth. Yeah. In a pure conscience of worship. That is what you need to be episodically resurrection life training center to come into that place of understanding that type of worship in from your heart. Not Conditional love, but unconditional love. You do it because you love unconditionally. You don't do it because you're forced to. Or you're trying to impress somebody. That's not what, that's not what this is talking about here. Pure conscience, pure worship that the Father seeks. And it says, it says, with a pure conscience in the spirit of my Father's 
when without when without ceasing I remember you night and day in my prayers. Hura shatariyama shatariyama mama. Night and day in the prayer language. Uh, we have been praying for so many over this last week. We've been praying for you, Stephen Morgan, in, in, in Australia. We pray for you. We pray for you, uh, Pastor Paul Granalata in India that's in, in, in the hospital right now battling, uh, you know, a blood dis disorder and malaria. We pray for you. Lord, raise him up. Lord, burn that out of him. Burn that out of him, Lord, that he would be raised up mm. and out of the hospital in Jesus' name. Yeah. And we've been praying for the same with our uh, sister from uh, uh, from Total Freedom, just down the way. Mm. You know, Robin uh, McMillan says, those who would really want to pray without ceasing, those who would really want to uh, pray, those are the ones I'm calling out, she says. I just want those who are committed to pray without ceasing, day and night, for those who are my loved ones that I have loved ones for, that are in a place of infirmity and battling their life for their life from cancer. So we pray that right now for any of you out there that have loved ones who are battling for their loved ones in prayer and intercession because they are in a place where the infirmity of the devil is trying to take their life out. And we say, no, in Jesus' name. Amen. We say, Lord, let the blood of Jesus come down upon them by his str stripes. Yes. Yeshua HaMashiach, by his blood, Amen. by the blood of the Lamb, Amen. be healed in Jesus' name. Be set free. Come into a place of total surrender and belief and truth and perfect conscience Amen. of who they are as a son and daughter of the Most High. Is I remember you night and day in my prayers. That's the prayer that Robin was asking. She was not want, wanting anybody to come into a place and not be totally, not be committed totally to this prayer situation because it was it's, it's a deep situation. Do you have some situations that are deep that need total commitment to, for people to stand in the gap for prayer? Uh, will a hireling do that? No. But Yeshua or Yahweh, Jehovah, Rohi, Rohi the, the Lord thy shepherd, will. You know, I, I, I've, got, I've got a few things going here. So, Bear with me. And I remember you night and day, and when I and it says when when and when as I recall your tears, oh, the tears. Uh, you know, Psalm fifty six eight talks about the tear bottle where your tears are shed, and every tear. Our leader there. He says when and it says when as I recall your tears I yearn to see you so that oh as much as I love him I can't do it because you need to know that God is crying with you not for you you need people to stand and be in the gap who will cry with you not for you you need intercessors who have the, the authority that take the bow right now in the month of Kislev as a Benjaminite who are trained in the art of intercession and, sh and shooting the fiery darts of intercession that hit the mark of taking out the enemy. Are you skilled in that? Are you committed to that lifestyle of resurrection life and power and love and and of a sound mind, of the mind of Christ, of Philippians 2, 5, that of, of Yeshua HaMashiach. Our, our Yeshua is sitting on the right hand of God the Father. He's our mediator. He's, he's our advocate. Uh, he's our inter intercessor. Do you not think his prayers are accurate? They, do you not think his prayers are bold? Do you not think his prayers hit the mark to the Father? 
Do you not think he blows the enemy away when he, the enemy comes and says, yada, 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 about whoever you are? And, and the blood of Jesus is over you? And the Father says, out of my sight, devil. Satan, you demon. Out of my sight. Because I love my son and my daughter. And they are set free and set apart from you and set apart from this world because they are seated in heavenly places. As it says in Ephesians 2, verses 4, 5, and 6, seated jointly, co-seated with Christ. Do you not think that's a good place to be? Do you think there's any attack by the devil when you're seated, co-seated as brothers and sisters and sons and daughters in the same throne? You're untouchable! Verse 4, and when, as I recall your tears, I yearn to see you so that I may be filled with joy. Oh, filled with joy with the resurrection life and joy of the breakthrough in your life. In the breakthrough, you, as it says in Isaiah 10, 27, that the, it says that the fat or the anointed one or Yeshua HaMashiach, uh, the anointed one, Okay, Christ the anointed one, but that's Yeshua HaMashiach, destroys the yoke of oppression. It doesn't break it so it can be built back. It's dissipated. It's dust. He destroys it through the anointed one. And you are made in his image to be the carrying of the same glory of the same anointing from heaven, the same anointing, that your prophetic presence, as it says in Revelation 19.10, that the that prophetic word and the word of your testimony is Yeshua HaMashiach coming out of you. Yeah, it is. Okay. I love the tear bottle. I love the tear bottle. I think it's Psalm 56 8. Have you got that? Psalm 56 8. Or it's 58 6. Sometimes I get them flipped. I think it's 56 8. Can you read that out of the voice or, uh, or some other translation that really brings some life to it? Kora Shatari and Mama Kora God keeps a tear bottle at his throne. And cries with you. Every tear that you have cried is written down in the book of tears. It doesn't go unnoticed when you are crying out to God for either in a place of intercession for yourself or for others. Our Adonai Elohim weeps and cries with you. Got it? Yep. Uh, from the voice translation, Psalm 56, verse 8. Um, yeah, and we'll go verse 8 and 9. Well, what the heck. We'll go to 11. Yeah. Anyway, um, verse 8, starting verse 8, uh, voice translation, Psalm 56. You have taken note of my journey through life caught each of my tears in your bottle. But God, are they not also blots on your book? Then my enemies shall turn back and scatter on the day that I call out to you. This I know for certain. God is on my side. <laughs> Verse 10, in God whose word I praise and in the eternal whose word I praise, in God I have placed my trust. Do we have misplaced trust in many areas? Do we place our trust in God, really, and his word? Or do we place our trust in other things, in things, in people, in our own self-sufficiency? In God I have placed my trust. I shall not let fear come in. <laughs> now, is that interesting? I shall not let fear come in, for what can measly man do to me? Man has no power. God does. 
an adverse, let me see, yeah, what the heck, uh, verses 12 and 13. I am bound by your promise, O God. My life is my offering of thanksgiving to you. For you have saved my soul from the darkness of death, steadied my feet from stumbling, so that I might continue to walk before God, embraced in the light of the living. Mm -hmm. So the Lord has taken note of our journey through life yeah. every step of the way. He misses nothing. And so he has every single tear yeah. has been caught in his tear bottle. Yes. And and noted, it says uh, every, you know, it said every blot in well, my book. It, it, yeah, are they not also blots on your book? Yeah, but I'm just saying if you, but that's that's the book of tears. If you, it, there's yeah. a number of books that are going to be opened at the time of your right. going face to face with Yeshua Hamashiach, but the book of tears is one of them. <laughs> there's a number of books, five books, but the book of tears. Now you can read that and uh, maybe try that in another uh, translation. But as she's doing that, just remember: is it fear over family? Is it fear over the uh, sons and daughters? Like, uh, it, let faith arise and your enemies be scattered. Let faith arise and your enemies be scattered. Let faith arise and your enemies be scattered. Let faith arise today and tomorrow. I think that's uh, Isaiah 60 verses 1 and 2. Let faith arise and your enemies be scattered. Do you think fear is going to chase the enemies? It's a magnet allowing the fears to come in and bring a place of compromise in your faith and your belief system. Stop it. Kick him out. Okay, let's go a little further here. And it says in verse 5, I am calling up memories of your sincere and unqualified faith. Second oh, oh, oh. Timothy. I like the classic version of the Amplified here. I can read this out of, uh, uh, you know, the Messianic. I can read it out of the Lexington Bible. I can re read it out of the Hebrew. But this classic, it says, I, and this is a word for today. This is an exhortation, a prophetic word of the voice of God today for you. It's saying, I am calling up memories. In your memories, in your dreams, and in your visions, you know, as uh, Apostle Vincent Poole spoke uh, last night in, in the Macedonian call, I sent it all out, listen to that, that those dreams and visions that God is giving you that's coming out of your, out of your DNA, out of your substance of who you are, are the positive things that God wants you to walk in, in faith and your belief and your trust and in the light of God. He says, I am calling up memories of your sincere and unqualified faith, the leaning of your entire personality on Adonai. The leaning of your entire personality, the laminin of the cells within you, check it out, the laminin leading on and being a part, leaning on Adonai Elohim, because we are made in the image and in the substance. Do you not think the laminin is inside of our God Adonai, inside Yeshua Mashiach, in the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh? Do you not think that that substance, that laminin, that cell, that DNA is leading on whoever we are in the flesh to lean on Adonai, that we would leave and pass and leave we are a new creation in Christ, Adonai, uh, Yeshua, Hamashiach. Let the old pass away. Let the new cell of the DNA of that laminin come alive, leaning of your entire personality on Adonai and upon Yeshua, Hamashiach, in absolute trust and confidence in his resurrection life and power, his wisdom and his, oh, his mindset and his goodness a faith that first lived permanently in your heart. In the heart of your grandmother Lois. So I want you to know, uh, I had an awesome grandmother. Prayed for me. 
and her name was Mary. I could I could put her her name in my in in your grandmother Mary, and and your mother well my mother's name was Irene Eunice, and now I am fully persuaded that Holy Spirit also dwells in you also. The resurrection life and power of the Holy Spirit empowered and believed in the nine gifts of the Spirit, the nine fruits of the Spirit. This is the ninth month of the Hebraic calendar of kids left. This is the month of birthing. This is the month of birthing all the nine fruits, all the nine gifts of the Spirit. Everything that's, that is the substance of the Holy Spirit and the substance of Yeshua Mashiach, the substance of Adonai is being birthed alive in you through your DNA of your forefathers. Oh. <laughs> you know, I can look back to at least seven generations or more of, of, on, on, on a number of sides of, of my genealogy of those who were disciples of Yeshua HaMashiach and sons and daughters of the Most High. Do you not think their DNA is the DNA of God sitting in heaven? Now, verse 6, here it comes. Then you can go here. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, back to, uh, <laughs> did you get another one here? A book mm -hmm. of my days? No. No, uh, bo no uh, 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 book of tears. Get another translation there? Well, I did have no. Okay, all right. So for here on uh, verse 6, and it says, that is why I would remind you to stir up, to stir up, oh, the Holy Spirit. You know, when you read that in the Hebrew, in the Hebrew you know, when it says stir up, it says, you know what it says here? As we go, we're going to go to uh, Acts, uh, Acts 3, 19. Repent for times of refreshing are near. That word refreshing is stir up in the Holy Spirit. And that's the same breath of the Ruach HaKadosh that was blown into Adam that Adam came alive. And it's, and it's the same breath that Yeshua HaMashiach blew into the disciples when he went into the upper room. Do you not the whole think the Holy Spirit, the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead is inside you? And do you think your mortal bodies are the same? Do you not, are you not crucified with Christ? Or... At, Elohim, Adonai, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Ruach HaKadosh. You not know, think you've, you've gone through the, the pain and persecution that's necessary as, as you going down the Via Della Rosa that Yeshua did? We'll all go through it. And that's why the tears are important. And that's why we must say, God did not give us a spirit of timidity. He did not give us a spirit of fear, but he gave us resurrection, life, and power. He gave us unconditional love, and he gave us what? A mind of Christ. A sound mind of Adonai Elohim, of all wisdom and knowledge that we can call upon. And it says, and that is why... I would remind you to stir up, rekindle the embers and fan the flame. <sighs> In other words, Adonai is taking his breath and he's rekindling the flame. <sighs> As it says in Acts 3.19, Re repent for times of refreshing are near. In that repentance, let your tears flow and let them be tears of joy. Leave the old man. Leave the old world. Leave the kingdom of this world and be translated. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on this earth, on me. Change my personality as I lead into you, Abba Father, as I lead into the kingdom of heaven upon this earth and we change this earth and we're on this earth until Yeshua HaMashiach comes back and he says occupy advance the kingdom of God until my return do not fall asleep timid church 
Awaken! Arise! Release the arrows of intercession. That's why it says here in verse 6 of 2 Timothy, that is why I remind you to stir up, rekindle the embers, blow into those embers, and those embers bring a flame, and revival comes in places where, they, where the prayers of the saints have been there for hundreds of years, or 50 years, or 10 years, and the revival happens because of repentance. Let the old man die, whatever's inside you. Let the anointing destroy oppression of the enemy. So, Isaiah 60. Let faith arise and the enemies be scattered and destroyed by the arrows of the intercessors of God by heaven, shooting them accurately and taking them out. Every one of the enemies and destroying them. Boom. Patriot missiles. And it says, the embers of the fan of the flame and it says, and keep burning. Oh, what's that old song? Put the oil in my lamp, keep it burning. The oil in my lamp, I pray. Keep the oil in my lamp, keep it burning, burning, burning. Keep it burning till the break of day. Whoa, wow. Do you not see the anointing here? It comes out, God blows his raw cockadash into that embers or that coal that maybe is, looks like it's gone to sleep and it comes alive in you and keep burning and, and it says the graciousness of the gift of Adonai the inner fire <laughs> I love it. it says the inner fire Hebrews 12 29 it says our Adonai is an all-consumer fire and that's the inner fire that's within us that needs to be released unto all the nations in all the cities, as the ecclesia is in the gap, of the portal, the doorway, as Jesus is knocking in every door in every community. Let that fire be released. Release the arrows of the fire and the flame of all those arrows that are inside you accurately as Benjaminites. I love it. It says, let the gracious gift of Adonai, the inner fire that is in you by means of the laying on of hands with those of the elders of your ordination. So it says the elders or the overseers. You know, there, there's a lot of different things about elders and overseers. Uh, you know, some, some, you know, Constantine changed that to bishops. But, you know, uh, you know, that's just the structure of that church system. That's not the structure of what Adonai is talking about, the elders in the church. It's talking about the overseers of who have or are walking in that apostolic order. Keep the oil in my lamp, keep it burning. Keep the oil in my lamp, I pray. Every elder, every over overseer, the anointing of the Yeshua HaMashiach, the anointed one. Keep the oil in my lamp. Keep it burning, burning, burning. Keep it burning till the break of the day of the light of God. Hey, I hit that. No, not too bad. Close? Eh, okay. And then verse 7 says, And for God did not give us a spirit of timidity. And I love it, it says, the classic version says, of cowardice. Cowardice is that fear, that cowardice, that compromising, that fawning of fear that the enemy wants to bring into your life that you would draw back. And God says, no, this is the time and the hour and the season that to be bold, my sons and daughters of the most. Be bold in faith. Be bold in your belief. Be bold in the Holy Spirit. And he have given us the spirit of resurrection, life, and power of love and a calm and well-balanced mind and discipline in self and control. Then verse 8, it says, Do not blush or be ashamed. <laughs> Do not be ashamed. Do not blush to testify to and of your Messiah, nor of me, a prisoner for his sake. Are you a prisoner of his sake as a son and daughter of the Most High? 
but with me take your share of the suffering the persecution that we're going through right now it's it's just normal it's just normal but we've got to break through with that okay um, I wrote this two years ago you'll find it on my on my life on my on my life page it says I wrote it November 12 2019 and it says here you are set apart to serve 777 to be set apart that is Yahweh that is Barak Hashem Yahweh the spirit Yo 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 777 Yahweh has set apart his beloved for his unconditional love for his resurrection life and power he has set you apart for the wisdom of a disciplined discipleship of a mind of, of Yeshua and the mind of Adonai Jesus or Yeshua HaMashiach our Jehovah Ro Rohi we the shepherd we follow you can read that in Psalm 23 now and Yahweh opens the gate the door the portal the portal to set apart all his beloved sheep for eternity this is the time of the separation of, of the wheat and the chaff because the threshing floor and it says the grain comes to the threshing floor it says the rest is moved on the chaff that is the same as what happened um, you know was in, in the, the ark of Noah the, the evil was cast out but the grain stayed in the ark resurrection life center apostolic resurrection life center ARC in other words the grain the living grain the living bread stayed in the ark that it would be multiplied and go forth and be multiplied God has saved you in the ark to be and to be his ap apostle to be his messenger to be sent out in power and authority do not be timid Horoshata we his beloved are the living hope you can read that in first peter chapter 1 verse 3 4 5 i don't know if i'm going to get to that tonight i have it marked up but we are the living hope the living seed this living resurrection life and seed to be multiplied we are his beloved and the living hope set apart 777 the way the living faith to conquer fear let faith arise and his enemies be scattered. Let faith arise and conquer fear. You sing with me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Through his perfect love that casts out fear, Yahweh anoints his beloved with oil to serve, to be anointed, and to be one with him. You can go and you can look at that. Uh, you know, the there's some good ones that I put up and it says uh, and it says here I am not ashamed Messiah Yeshua and it says here to guard my creator Adonai's commands Exodus 15 26 it's got all the scriptures there it's, you can go to my uh, and get it to use and call upon the father Adonai's true name Exodus 3.15 is about 10 scriptures. To proclaim the true name of Messiah. Acts 4.12. Luke 2.21. To be a witness of the truth of scripture. Psalm 19.7. Isaiah 8.16-20. Matthew 10.18. Matthew 24.14. 1 John 4.14. To walk in the ancient paths of Yahweh. The ancient paths of Yahweh. Proverbs 8.20. Isaiah 2.3. Micah 4.2. Matthew 3.3. 3, Jeremiah 18.15. They're all there. You can go get them. To, for being a Hebrew, an Israelite like Messiah. Hebrew crossing over. From leaving the past and going into the, what God has called us to be. Genesis 14, 13. Genesis 14, 12. Hmm. I just want you to know you can go there and you make that, those studies. 
And now I'm going to read, it says in Psalm 23, a Psalm of David. Yahweh, it says in Hebrew, Yahweh is my shepherd. I do not lack. He makes me lay down, lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He turns back my being. Mm. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. When I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread before me a table in the face of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup runs over. Keep the oil in my lamp, keep it burning. Keep the oil in my lamp, I pray. Keep the oil in my lamp, keep it burning, burning, burning. Keep it burning till the break, the breakthrough of your day. Yahweh is the way, 777. Only goodness and kindness will follow me all of the days of my life, and I shall dwell, cleave in the house of Yahweh to the length of days. Mm. Psalm 23. Going back to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, it says, Who delivered and saved us and called us with a he called us with a calling in itself, being holy and leading to holiness. Being holy and leading to holiness. Itonie, in the pursuit of holiness. Per, that word perfect there in the Greek. Itonie, in the pursuit of holiness. In the Hebrew, the same way, in the pursuit of holiness. Being perfect as we're in the pursuit of holiness. in that perfect conscience and saved us and called us with a calling in itself holy and leading into holiness to the to a life of consecration in that repentance consecration in the blood a vocation of holiness he he did it yahweh did it not because of anything of merit that we have done because of and uh, to further his own purpose and great and unmerited favor, which was given to us in Yeshua Mashiach, Christ Jesus, before the world began. <laughs> Eternal ages ago. Of the ancient of days. The laminin of your soul, of the, being made in the, in the substance and in the likeness of our Adonai, of our Elohim, of our Yeshua HaMashiach, of our Yahweh. It is the purpose and grace which he now has made known and has fully disclosed and made real to us through appearing to us as Savior, who annulled death and made it no effect because we have resurrection life now. Brought li and he has brought life and immor immortality. Do you not believe that we are in a place of immortality when you read John 11, 25? John 11, 25, it says, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me shall not die. Do you believe this? I believe it. We're living in resurrection life now and forevermore. You want to read Philippians 3.10? What have you got there? Oh. Have you got something to go? Mm -hmm. It says in Philippians 3.10, it says, ah, the, you know, it says Yeshua has all the power, the life and the power of the resurrection. Philippians 3.10 and the love and you know we love not our lives until our death our mortal death for eternal life that we walk in resurrection life you can go study that but it says the, the, it says immunity for 
eternal death to light to the light through the gospel for the proclaiming of the gospel i was appointed a herald a preacher an apostle a special messenger and a teacher to the gentiles and this is why i am suffering and that is why you'll go through suffering as i do still i am not ashamed i will be bold for i will and i know and i perceive I have the knowledge of and am acquainted with him, Adonai Elohim, Yeshua Mashiach, whom I have believed and adhered to the trusted and relied on, and I am positively persuaded that he is able to guard and to keep that which has been entrusted to me and which I have committed to him until that day. Hold fast, be bold, and follow the pattern of the wholesome, of the sound teaching, and be that disciple which you have been heard, which you have heard from me in all of the faith and the love which are in the fullness of that we are in Yeshua Mashiach, Christ Jesus. Guard and keep this greatness, care, and this precious. What have you got? Guard and keep. Hmm? Are you winding it up or what? Well, you're gonna wind it up. Yeah. Okay, I wanna go back. To, I'm not sure what you're Well, to. Philippians three ten. Yeah. Let's just go to Philippians three ten. Okay. So in the Passion Translation, um, um I'm I'll start in verse nine. Yeah. My passion is to be consumed with him and not cling to my own righteousness based in keeping with the written law. My only righteousness will be his based on the faithfulness of Jesus Christ, the very righteousness that comes from God. And I continually long to know the wonders of Jesus and to experience the overflowing power of his resurrection working in me. I will be one with him in his sufferings and become like him in his death. Only then will I able to be able to experience complete oneness in him in his resurrection from the realm of death. Mm. Pretty awesome, eh? Mm -hmm. And I continue long to know that I know him. Mm -hmm. And I know the wonders of Yeshua HaMashiach. Mm -hmm. And to experience the overflowing power of resurrection life and power and the resurrection working in me. And I will be one with him in suffering. And that word suffering means Passover. I will, I will be in the Passover with him <laughs> and become like him in his death and his resurrection. Do you believe that? <laughs> Do you believe that? <laughs> yeah. We're going to bring this to a close. I, 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 there's two more scriptures. First uh, Peter. Um, you know in the declarations and the prayers and everything that we're doing in Yahweh and Yeshua you really need to know who you are as a son of God or daughter of, of Adonai you might be a foreigner in a foreign land but so was Jesus so was Yeshua HaMashiach when he came to this world first but a great re revelation a great revival has been ever since because of the blood of the Lamb. And his seed continues to multiply through the Holy Spirit as Adonai, Adohim, said, go forth and multiply. From whether it was from Genesis, whether it was from the ark, whether it was from the, the cross, go forth and multiply through Passover, through the blood of the Lamb through resurrection, life, and power, through sound mind. Do not operate in a spirit of timidity or fear, but power and resurrection, unconditional love, and a sound mind of Yeshua HaMashiach. And that you know Him. That you know Him inside you. You are one that you know Him. <clears throat> in the power of the resurrection life inside you. And the suffering, which is the Passover, inside you. 
And you love not your life until your death because your mortal bodies room and say, 11, you, <laughs> it's just the same spirit that raised Yeshua HaMashiach, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is inside you. And your mortal body has been changed and you are a new creation in Christ. Yeshua, forevermore. You shall not die. You've got eternal life as it says here. We just read it. You've got eternal life. We're going to spend a lot of time together. The last 50 years has been what? A jubilee? What about 50 million years, honey? Can you handle it? Whoa. Or more? We'll be with Jesus and we will yeah. be celebrating. You will have glorified. We'll, worship, we'll be worshiping him. We'll have glorified bodies, no aches and pains. Like I, like I did three hours of blowing snow when I came in here. I had a few ouches, but I had a shower and got to feel better. Mm -hmm. We're not going to have any of those pains. Nope, we've yet to hang out in the presence of the Almighty. And worship in spirit and truth with perfect conscience. <laughs> Etonia in the holiness to continue to be holy. Okay, so isn't that exciting? It's exciting to, to uh, be a part of all this. And uh, so First Peter, I'll let you read that. First Peter uh, chapter 1 whatever you've got, and start with uh, verse 1, and verses uh, right to verse 9, you may want to quit at, uh, at 10 or somewhere in, that, in there. But there is, this is such the abundant mercy of life as we bring this to a close. Okay, so this is, I'm reading now out of the Passion Translation, First Peter chapter 1, um, starting in verse 1. From Peter, an apostle of Jesus the Anointed One, to the chosen ones who have been scattered like seed into the nations, ah, living as refugees. Like seed. In Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, and throughout the Roman provinces of Asia and Bithynia. You are not forgotten. Take this word and, and let that speak to you yourself. You are not forgotten, for you have been chosen and destined chosen. by Father God. <laughs> I don't know. Holy Spirit has set you apart to be God's holy ones. Obedient followers, catch the word, obedient followers of Jesus Christ who have been gloriously sprinkled with his blood. Oh. May God's delightful grace and peace cascade over you many times over. Celebrate with praises the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has shown us his extravagant mercy. Mm -hmm. For his fountain of mercy has given us a new life. We are reborn to experience a living, energetic hope through the resurrection living of hope. Jesus Christ. Living faith. From the dead. Living resurrection life. No more dead. The grave is done. It has no sting. <laughs> Do you get it? Keep going. I know. I get excited. So I'm going to do verse Bold. 3 over again. Oh, Celebrate please. with praises the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has shown us his extravagant mercy, for his fountain of mercy has given us a new life. We are reborn to experience a living, energetic hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We are reborn into a perfect inheritance Whoa -ho. that can never perish, Ho -ho. nor be defiled. Yeehaw! and never diminish. Huh. It is promised and preserved forever in the heavenly realm for you. Through our faith, the mighty power of God constantly guards us until our full salvation is ready to be revealed in the last time. May the thought of this cause you to jump for joy. There you go. Yeehaw! I know, a little drama. He likes to be dramatic, right? So I was giving him the, that opening. Not that he needs it, but at any rate, back to the word of God. May the thought of this cause of this cause you to jump for joy, even though lately you've had to put up with the grief of many trials. This two last two years, the viruses, everything else, financial difficulties, fear triumphing over family, causing separation in the in, in families, mm -hmm. in the churches in friends. 
We must persevere through with unconditional love. But we know that the word of God says mercy triumphs over judgment. So therefore, even as the scripture says, there's so much mercy here available Amen. to us. In, in verse 7, but these only reveal the sterling core of your faith, which is far more valuable than gold that perishes, for even gold is refined by fire. Your authentic faith that's the real thing, will result in even more praise, glory, and honor when Jesus, the Anointed One, is revealed. Amen. Verse 8, You love Him passionately, although you have not seen Him. Mm. But through believing in Him, knowing you are sat... Him. Sorry, knowing Him. Sorry. You love Him passionately, although you have not seen Him. But through believing in Him, you are saturated with an ecstatic joy, indescribably sublime and immersed in glory. I like that. For you are reaping the harvest of your faith, the full salvation promised you your soul's victory. You are the glory carriers. We are the glory carriers from heaven, the anointing that pours out of heaven. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Let thy kingdom come, thy glory, thy anointing. Let that come upon us, upon earth, so that we can take it upon this land as his servants, as I'm his do special me messengers. Go ahead. Verse 8 again. You love him passionately, although you have not seen him, but through believing in him, you are saturated, mm. soaked, saturated, every corpuscle of your being, and we just call on, on the Word of God to do that work in hearts and minds today and in bodies today where, there has, where we're not at all saturated in much except the world or the troubles or the aches or the pains. But when you love Him passionately, although you have not seen Him in the natural, but through believing in Him, you are saturated with an ecstatic joy, indescribably sublime, and immersed in glory. The mikvah, you were immersed ah, in glory. Amen. And and the the uh, there can be a the glory can be translated in the Aramaic, a glorification that cannot be described. So you are immersed in that glorification, your whole being that cannot be described. For you are reaping the harvest of your faith, the full salvation promised you your soul's victory. So we mm -hmm. win because Jesus is the winner. Jesus is the miracle worker. And therefore, he is working wondrous miracles in and through our very bodies, in and through us to reach and touch others. He is working a miraculous work that we may not be able to see and touch. If we would just know that behind the scenes, he is doing a miraculous work in the, in the realm. He, God is not confined. Our God is not confined to this realm that we are confined to. He is a God of glory and of power and of might. And he is the God who is setting his people free. And in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we just say, Lord, Lord, set your people free. But Lord, your people will walk free when we come into obedience to your word and to you and how you direct our paths. Lord, that we lean not on our own understanding, but we acknowledge you in all our ways and you will direct and lead us in the path that you have directed for us in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And so... God. Yeah, it's like, Lord, yep, I'm, no, I'm not sure if you're wanting to. We're, we're close. I, yeah. I just have to go back to Acts 3.19. Okay, you do that then. And then we'll come back here. Okay. Because, you know, the Amplified Classic is like uh, uh, having Dr. Don here and May. You know, they're just mature and classic and unconditional love and the, and the, and they just they're just solid and mature yeah. and uh, you know we need to be in that way and we talked about that in 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 second uh, timothy uh, one and, and talked about the, of our fathers and you know and generations 
you know, they're fourth generation or fifth generation, you know, even this day. And that's, you know, of our fathers, they're grandfathers to, 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 to fathers. And we need more of that today in our in, in our in our Acts two gatherings. Okay, we need that. So, for you that are mature out there, if you think you need to sit on a bench, you need to get involved and and help the young ones grow from the milk into maturity. So, in Acts chapter three, and, and it says, I'm going to read again out of the classic. This this is just. Um, this is just a class, the, the classic amplified. Verse 16 says, And his name, through and by faith in his name, has made this man whom you see and recognize well and strong. Yes, the faith which is through and by Yeshua HaMashiach has given the man this perfect soundness of body. That perfect is Etonian which is in the pursuit of holiness, you know, in the, in the soundness of body before all of you. Now, here it comes. And now, brethren, I know that you acted in ignorance. In other words, he's bringing correction to, to uh, the church. He's bringing correction to those who are going uh, three degrees off. I know, brethren, that you have acted in ignorance. My people perish for a, a lack of knowledge or prophetic insight, prophetic understanding. My people perish You've acted in ignorance, not aware of what you were doing, as did your rulers also. Thus has Adonai fulfilled and what he foretold by the mouth of the voice of his prophets and his son, Messiah, Christ, should undergo ill treatment and be afflicted and suffer. We've gone to the scripture. It says we're going to go through this suffering and perseverance that we're going through now. You go ask uh, Dr. Don how much he's seen in the last 30, 40, 50 years of different people going through difficulties and suffering. You know, I, I'm younger than him 15 years almost. And I've seen it. That's almost a generation. If, he, if I'm fourth generation, he's fifth. But I, he, I honor him and me. We're honored to have him here as far as of resurrection life and God is now. Mm -hmm. And it says, so, and here it comes. It says, and, and, and this, is the, this is the arrow that's being sent by heaven to the sons and daughters who haven't quite got this, who are operating in fear and not in faith and not in belief and saying, and be afflicted and suffer. So repent and change your mind and purpose. In other words, God did not give you a spirit of fear or timidity, but of power, resurrection, life, and love, and a sound mind as we went through and talked about. So it's saying you repent and change your mind and purpose because you're going down the wrong way because you're in stinking thinking from the neck up. Get into the clean stuff. Don't look into, the, into what's happening in the world. Look up into what's happening in heaven. And he says, turn around and return. And he says that word, turn around there. Turn around and return to Adonai and your sins be erased and blotted out and wiped clean. The times are refreshing, and that word times are refreshing, that in the Hebrew is saying the Ruach HaKadosh is blowing his breath back into you, that you're coming into a place of, of knowing him, Adonai, recovering from all the effects of the heat and the, and the reviving and with fresh air. Do you not think there's, there, there is a bad air around with these viruses? Do you not think you need filters to get rid of all the stuff? God's saying, breathe into my fresh air. Breathe into. And you will come into the presence of Adonai Elohim. Come into his presence and know him. My last scripture, and then you can close. Revelations 22, verse 14. Blessed are those who do his commandments. In other words, if he is commanding you to do, well, do in faith, in belief, and trust in him. Do not have fear. Do not let fear override you as the governor inside you. Rip it out of the, you. Rip it out of, your, uh, out of your engine. Get rid of the governor of fear. Perfect love casts out fear, or you will be tormented by the evil one. 
Blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life. When you do it, have the right to the tree of life. We talked about this uh, in, in about last week in regards to how in Revelations chapter 2 verse 7 it says, I, Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach wants you to come and eat of the tree of life now. You couldn't, they couldn't do it in the garden, but he wants you to eat of the tree of life now. Here it's saying, you have been commanded and you have the right, you have the, you have the right to the tree of life because you are righteous and holy in the blood of the Lamb and may enter through the gates into the city. The gates, the portal in the gates. And this is my prophetic word I had here. I had a prophetic word for you. There it is. The prophetic gates into the city. But outside are the dogs, the sorcerers, the sexual immoralities, the manipulators, the, the, that manipulating python spirit, and the murderers and the idolaters. They are right outside the gate of the church outside of the gathering and they're trying to come in and defile the holiness of the sanctuary and the altar of God and you and no do not allow this to happen stop the evil from coming into the, your house Matthew 24 24 it says even the elect could be deceived if it were possible if you neglect the Holy Spirit you will be deceived and who are the lovers and the practices of the foreigners of the practices of lies? I, Yeshua Mashiach, have sent my angel to testify to you of these things in, the, in, in all the ecclesia. I am the root and I am the offering and I am the offspring of David. I am the bright morning star and the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him who hears say, come from your lips inside in that perfect place. Let's say your Holy Spirit, come, come Yeshua HaMashiach. Come, we are the bride and we are awaiting you. And we are holy and we are righteous. We repent and we turn away. We, if we are in a place that we need to be refreshed, let's be refreshed from the stinking air and virus that's caused so many to go the wrong way. And let those who thirst come, because he is the spring of living water. John chapter 7, verse 37 to 39. He is the spring of living water. Could drink of him. And whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. Drink of him freely. Let it come up. Let it come up. Let it come up. Spring up, oh well. Spring up, oh well. Come up, oh well. I know. I wish we had somebody here who could sing. But spring up a well inside you of living water and, and leak all over the nations. Leak all over the house. Leak out that spirit of the living water. Let Where you step, let it leak out of you. Be saturated as we... Be so saturated with the living water. Be so saturated with the truth and the life and the resurrection and the life. Just spread it everywhere in your home, in your family, in your city, in your nations. Leak out Yeshua Hamashiach. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're we're going to close, you know, with um, this is taken from an excerpt like Psalm 116, uh, verses 10 and 11, and then like a prayer devotional a prayer um, declaration, shall we say, or a prayer anyway. For, it's taken from Prayers on Fire, and Psalm 116, verses 10 and 11. It's from the Passion Translation. And the, it's titled Believe. So we've talked, you know, believe. Believe on God. Believe in his word. Believe and trust on him and his word that he is faithful and he is just. And he will carry out his word. So even when it seems like I'm surrounded by many liars and my own fears. And though I'm hurting in my suffering and trauma. I still stay faithful to God. And I speak words of faith. These are choices to speak, words of life, words of faith. Even when it seems I'm surrounded by many liars and my own fears, and though I'm hurting in my suffering and trauma, 
I still stay faithful to God, and I speak words of faith. So we can say, Lord, in the midst of turmoil and fear, give me, give us this unwavering faith. Lord, demolish every fear with your powerful love. I let go of every thought that tries to make my problems look bigger than, than you. Lord, you are much bigger than our problems. So I let go of every thought. Take that thought, grab it, let it go. That would try to make my problems look bigger than you. Nothing is too hard for you, Lord. Nothing. And we can say, and I say, I believe. I choose to believe. In the areas where I struggle with unbelief, oh God, I ask for your mercy. Thank you, Jesus. I will stand and declare your promises, letting them penetrate deep into my heart so that they would become life within me. I remind myself of the many times that you have come through. You've come through for me before. You've never forgotten me. And even when it feels as though you have, I'll shake off the lie and I'll lean into your love. I release control <laughs> and the need to understand. You know, there's a biggie. We want to control everything. But now we choose, I say, I choose to release control. And I choose to release that control and that need to understand. I seek you, Lord, for wisdom and trust that if there's anything you want me to do besides believe, You'll show me. I refuse to worry. I was created to trust you and to be at peace. Give me eyes to see the situation the way you do. You'll get me through this, God. You love me. Faith gives me the victory. And I choose to trust in you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So go to my life on my lifeline for Facebook. Um, you'll see from November 12, 2019, a prophetic word that I wrote. And it talks about the Lord's gate. It talks about Adonai's gate and the door is, is open to you. It's talking about Yeshua HaMashiach is knocking at the door, the portal. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? He's knocking at the door, as it says in Revelations chapter 3. You, can, you, you have to make a decision here. You just can't stand and just sit on the fence here. You've got to make it. You have to go through the gate. You have to go through the portal. God is directing his messenger, his servant. You, his son and daughter of the Most High, to go through those doors, those portals, so that he can use you, that you know him to advance the kingdom of God in these great perilous times around the world. And many martyrs are happening right now in different places. It's not an easy time in certain places of the world. So this is the time to ad advance the kingdom of God. Jesus said, occupy until I return, but that means advance the kingdom of God. It's all about the kingdom of God, not your kingdom. The kingdom of God, not the kingdom of the devil. The kingdom of God advancing heaven upon this kingdom of earth. It's not the devil's anymore. It's ours that God has given to us. Where's the foot of Abraham and all the promises of Abraham goes as we step forth in those promises that have been prophesied and spoken from heaven to come alive in us. So are all the promises and through the blood of Yeshua as we step left and right foot upon this earth to revive it, to refresh it, to have it come to a place of worshiping the Lord thy God in revival around the world. We're going to have uh, Reverend Andrew... Alma and his wife Ruth from Nairobi, Kenya. I've been talking, I've been 2019. 
he, 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 he's awesome. They, they have a, they have a church right on the side of what they call Slum City. I, I prophesied over that in 2014. I said, we, we now change this to the city of refuge and many will be saved alive. In the last 10 months, over 100,000 have given their hearts to Jesus in Nairobi alone, all coming out of the, these slums and God is giving living hope to them. It's happening around the world in different places. We're going to have them come and speak and give testimony to that. It's happening whether it's, whether it's one soul or a hundred thousand or a million as it is happening in Pakistan and India. We need our Bangladesh. We need to advance the kingdom of God. So the Lord bless thee and the Lord keep thee. Keep thee and the Lord be gracious unto thee. A thousand blessings upon you. A thousand blessings of blessings of blessings of the kingdom of heaven upon you. The Lord be gracious unto thee. The Lord let this countenance, his light upon you in resurrection, life and power, living hope, living faith, living resurrection life, now and forevermore. And the Lord, Adonai, Elohim, Jehovah, Shalom, let you live in peace and dwell in that peace now and forevermore. We'll see you in two weeks as far as the ark as far as resurrection life, God is in the ark, apostolic resurrection life center. But next, this next Thursday coming up, God is in the house and we'll go back into our teachings of Revelations chapter three. Bless you all. Thank you for your giving. We, we, we need your help, uh, not only for our own help here at our keeping everything going here. We, we just need your help provisions and prayer, but also to send it to help across different places here in Canada, but also to the nations. There is such a need for your help. Listen to the Holy Spirit. If you can send us a gift financially, resurrectionlife90 at gmail.com e-transfer. You can mail it in yeah. to, Leslie gave you that, to Resurrection Life, Box 415, Carver, Manitoba, R-O-K-O-H-O. Bless you all. Until next Until time. Next week. Can you sing a song as I go hit the button? <laughs> Let the, keep the oil in my lamp, keep it burning. Uh -huh. Keep the oil in my lamp, I pray. Keep the oil in my lamp, keep it burning, burning, burning. Keep it burning to the break of day. Wow. <laughs>